Act 4, Scene 1 is the scene in which Hero intends to marry Claudio, and there's some interesting language in here. For one, when the friar asks if Claudio has come to marry Hero, he says no, and Leonardo says, to be married to her, friar, you come to marry her. Um, framing it as though Claudio was trying to be funny, like, no, he didn't come to marry her to perform the marriage ceremony, but came to be married to her. Then at the wedding, Claudio says, Leonardo, take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor, which is effectively saying, don't insult me as your friend by giving me this beautiful orange that looks sweet and awesome on the outside, but it's actually rotten on the inside. She only appears honorable from the outside. Everyone gathers at the church to witness the wedding between Hero and Claudio. Leonardo tells Friar Francer to be brief. The friar asks Claudio if he has come to marry Hero, to which Claudio replies no. Leonardo ignores this answer by playing with words to give it a different meaning. When the friar asks if either knows any impediment why they should not be married, Claudio tells Leonardo, give not this rotten orange to your friend, and accuses Hero of infidelity. Don Pedro adds to Leonardo that they saw Hero embrace another man the night before. Claudio cries out, oh Hero, what a hero hadst thou been. Hero faints, and heartlessly, Don John, Don Pedro, and Claudio all leave. Beatrice attempts to aid Hero, but Leonardo tells her that death is the fairest cover for her shame, because he is embarrassed to hear that Hero was unfaithful, and says he wishes she had never been born. Benedict asks Leonardo to calm down, and Friar Francis tells them to stop speaking this way, because based on how she reacted, he is convinced that Hero was truly innocent. Hero revives and says she has no idea what man Claudio thinks he saw her with. Leonardo swears to hurt her if she lies, but that he will seek revenge on Claudio and Don Pedro if they lied. Everyone says they will pretend that Hero has died of disgrace, so that everyone will pity her and even Claudio will hopefully regret his actions. They settle on this strategy, and everyone leaves Benedict and Beatrice behind. Benedict and Beatrice declare their love for each other, and Benedict says he will do anything to prove his love. Beatrice replies, kill Claudio. Benedict initially says he could never do this. Beatrice replies that then he must not really love her. She says that Claudio is their enemy for speaking lies about her cousin, and if she were a man, she would eat his heart in the marketplace. She is upset that she is limited by being a woman and is angry at Benedict. She begins to leave him, but Benedict stops her and decides that he will challenge Claudio to stand up for Hero's honor and for his love of Beatrice. Dogberry and the town clerk interrogate Baraccio and Conrad. Dogberry is a terrible examiner, but the watchman who overheard their conversation testifies against them. They are told that Don John secretly ran off that morning and that Hero was accused by Claudio in the church and died from humiliation. They are tied up and sent to Leonardo's home. So there are several ways that we see our themes in Act 4. First, we see deception when the friar advises Leonardo to tell everyone that Hero has died after the wedding fiasco. I think it's funny in many of Shakespeare's plays, it's a friar who is encouraging deception, like in Romeo and Juliet. It was a friar who talked to Juliet about pretending to be dead. And in here, again, it's the friar advising them to pretend that Hero has died. This will do several things. It will first buy them some time to figure out what happened rather than um, having her go out in public and deal with being ashamed because all of her friends and family just heard that she is this terrible cheater, right? Um, but secondly, he hopes that it will soften people's hearts, that they'll focus on what a good person she was and what a wonderful, albeit short, life she lived and not focus on this one bad accusation. So it's to help the family's reputation and honor and also to uh, buy them some time. We see noting in several ways. Remember, noting has something to do with reputation and people being concerned about what others note about them and what they think of them. Claudio, for one, cares very much what others think of him, and when he believes that his fiance has been cheating on him, he thinks that that makes him look like some kind of loser. And so rather than talk to her about what he saw, which would have been the more mature thing to do, he reacts badly 
obviously, and decides to avenge this insult to his honor by shaming her in front of all of their family and friends at their would-be wedding. And it's all because he cares more about his reputation than anything else at that point. He's ashamed. Um, the other way we see noting in here is that after this scandal is presented, Leonardo worries more about how others note his reputation than about how his daughter is doing and says he would prefer that she had died rather than live in shame and that he is horrified that she has tainted their family's name which is precisely not how you would want a father figure to react. We see the theme of love as Beatrice and Benedict grow closer as the scandal threatens Hero and Claudio. So this couple that seemed fated for a wonderful life together is falling apart. And in the meantime, Beatrice and Benedict are finally admitting how they feel to each other, not to other people yet, but at least to each other and getting closer.